The Republic of Panama is not a particularly large country, with a population of 4.3 million and only the size of Czechia or South Carolina. But of course, we all know how truly uninsignificant the country is due to a certain artificial waterway and how it affects the rest of the world. Holding one of the two linchpins in global low-latitude maritime trade, how has its mere position influenced the little nation, and how does it keep itself together through its somewhat unique geographic challenges? This video is brought to you by Skillshare. To talk about how Panama manages its geography today, first it might be best to take a brief look at its history. You know, just for context. Ever since the Isthmus of Panama first formed 3 million years ago, it allowed a great interchange between North and South America, in terms of plant and animal life, and later on, humans. By the time the Spanish showed up, the Isthmus was populated by Chibchan, Chocoan, and Cuevan peoples, with the latter making up the largest populations. Unfortunately, their populations would decline greatly due to European influences, namely in the form of European diseases, with the Cueva becoming extinct entirely by 1535. Rodrigo de Bastidas became the first European to explore the Isthmus in 1501, and in 1503, Vasco Núñez de Baboa crossed the Isthmus, proving it to be a shortcut between the seas, though of course building a canal at this time was still way out of the question. In 1514, Pedro Arias Davila was assigned royal governor, founding Panama City five years later. Panama grew over the next 300 years, exporting gold and silver from Western South America until becoming part of the newly independent Republic of Gran Colombia. Panama over the decades would make dozens of attempts to break away from Gran Colombia, all unsuccessful until a particular country which you may or may not have heard of got involved. Well, I mean, hopefully you've at least heard of all the countries I mentioned in this video. I mean, I mentioned like, what, four or five? If there was any country in the area that would have hugely benefited from a canal in Central America, it was definitely the United States, whose only sea route at the time to its own west coast was all the way around South America. There were rail lines crossing the isthmus between the ports, but for transporting the ships themselves, this was not ideal. After an... Actually, I think I'll let the flag map characters portray this. I think it'll be funnier. All right. Time to dig a canal across Panama. Our own Ferdinand de Lesep just finished the Suez Canal, and that was much longer. How wide can this be? Hey, that's what we call foreshadowing. <coughs> hey, France, how's the canal going? It was a complete failure. Okay, fine, I'll take care of it. Hey, Colombia, if I give you money for it, will you let me have a small strip of land to build a canal across Panama? Uh, okay, sure. Awesome. All right, guys, they agreed to the Hey Iran Treaty. Now we just gotta ratify it and... Done. Time to build. Actually, it appears they didn't ratify it. Oh. One second. Hey, Colombia. Colombia. Ah, whatever. Anyway, that's a nice Panama you have there. Dijiste no. Well, anyway, we noticed that there are some rebels there. Now, we're totally not just gonna get them made of money and let them break off into a new country subservient to oranges. Oh, too late. They're independent now. See ya. Oh, yeah. In 1903, Panama was introduced to the world stage as a new country. And in 1904, the U.S. was given the canal zone as effectively an unincorporated territory of the country itself though with few restrictions on movement for Panamanians traversing their country. The U.S. was able to build the canal by 1914 and kept the canal zone, originally in perpetuity, however it ended up being ceded back to Panama in 1979 after a series of riots amongst the Panamanians, who by the 50s and 60s had become fed up with a canal zone that effectively split their country, but from which they saw hardly any revenue. Though perhaps I can talk more about that in a future video. Perhaps when I can actually go there myself. Panama's capital, and by far largest city of course, is Panama City, or Panama in Spanish, with a population of 880,000, or 1.7 million in the metro area. Which is apparently still not large enough for Google not to assume I'm talking about some Floridian city of 36,000. Nope, seriously, I know I'm in the US, but why do you assume I mean Panama City, Florida, and not Panama City, no, but the original one which dates back to 1519, and has a population literally 25 times larger, and is the capital of a sovereign nation. Anyway, Panama City far surpasses any other city in Panama, with the second largest city Colón, or in Spanish, Colón, having only 78,000 people, or 247,000 in the metro area. With only a handful of cities with more than 10,000 people, the country is clearly quite centralized on Panama City itself. While it is far from the only major part of the national economy, it's easy to argue that the canal put Panama on the map. Panama City, whose metro population makes up 40% of the entire country's, sits just east of the canal's Pacific entrance, 
making particularly strong use of the banking and tourism sectors. Panama was also the first country besides the U.S. to adopt the U.S. dollar as a legal currency. While it does have its own currency at par with the U.S. dollar, the Balboa, it adopted the U.S. dollar in 1903, having been effectively left without a currency after breaking out from Colombia. At the Atlantic end of the canal, though, near Panama's second largest city, Colón, operates the Colón Free Trade Zone. This free port, second largest in the world, re-exports various merchandise, probably even including Canubis merchandise, to other countries in Latin America and the Caribbean. Despite this, though, while Panama City may fancy itself by the likes of Dubai or Singapore, cities like Colón seem noticeably more… left behind. All the wealth mostly going to Panama City itself. Although it is besides such a large free port, changes in technology and the way goods are processed have pushed the city on somewhat of a downward spiral. The contrast is quite clear, even just by appearances, with Panama City's gleaming skyscrapers versus Colón, which Hollywood filmmakers have reportedly used as a stand-in for Haiti. The only railway in the country, aside from the Panama Canal Mules or the Panama City Metro, is the Panama Canal Railway, between Panama City and Colón, carrying goods, tourists, and certain commuters. The country has 15,000 kilometers of roadway and 117 airports, particularly for the outer islands and towns like Puerto Albaldia, which have no road connections whatsoever. The Pan American Highway travels throughout the country, through Panama City, and ending, somewhat modestly, at the town of Yabisa. Panama shares a land border with two nations, Costa Rica and Colombia. Panama's border with Costa Rica is traversed by multiple roads, including the Pan American Highway, and dotted by numerous crossing points, including in the shared border town of Pasa Conoas. With Colombia, however, the situation is quite different, as the border runs through the famous Darien Gap, an expanse of rainforest that has proven particularly difficult to cross. Yeah, you could try to drive through if you're fine with driving through dense rainforest, but for anyone with even an inkling of sanity, this 100 kilometer gap means that land travel between South America and another part of South America that connects to North America is nearly impossible. This area has become somewhat of a refuge for smugglers and bandits taking advantage of the area's impenetrable geography. Plans have been proposed to link the two sections together, however, these have been blocked by environmentalist and agricultural groups. The latter worried about the spread of South American cattle diseases into North America. So although Panama is the single landmass binding the continents, I wouldn't exactly hold my breath for it to become as much of a north-south land trade power as an east-west sea trade power. Wait, hang on. Looking at history, it is clear that although Panama may have been put on the map by the Panama Canal, the U.S. has clearly benefited immensely from the mere existence of the canal, as it not only can more easily connect both its coasts, but also the west coast to Europe and the east coast to Asia. Thus, while American influence may be stronger in Panama than vice versa, it is the U.S. who has historically depended on this little country, and has thus gone quite out of its way to make sure it doesn't have to go too far out of its way. Hey there, do you want to basically become a god? Well, unfortunately the gods up there are quite choosy about who gets in, but I mean they're all jerks anyway. But with Skillshare, you can learn so many new skills to such an in-depth degree that you basically get the powers of the gods. Skillshare offers more than 20,000 in-depth courses for creative and curious lifelong learners, on everything from photography to language learning to graphic design to well-being to cooking, all taught by literally some of the best people imaginable to teach these topics. These lessons are usually an hour or two long, but can be watched in 5 to 10 minute parts, so you can learn as much as steadily as you want. Many of the courses even have hands-on projects you can do if you're someone who prefers to learn stuff that way. This week, for all you aspiring YouTubers out there, I recommend you check out Sorelia Mori's course, YouTube Success, build an authentic channel that's worth the follow. Because I mean, ultimately, the secret to getting tons of subscribers is… being worth subscribing to. Speaking of which, Skillshare is most certainly worth subscribing to. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, so no ads, no random stuff to take you off track, and they're constantly adding more classes to their roster. Go to Skillshare.com slash Canubis, and the first 1,000 of you to do so will also get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Because I mean, who says there has to be such a hard division between us mortals and the gods anyway? Oh, why do I feel all explodey all of a sudden? Please note, Skillshare probably won't actually give you divine powers. But I mean, I can't hurt, right?